right, guys, bringing you guys another exciting episode. Today, we're gonna do a uh, complete roof redo. Let's look at the details, right? What do you think so far, Sal? Well, I think it's gonna be a fun one. It'll be interesting if no one goes to the ceiling. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're gonna re remove this skylight here, and we're gonna frame it up and close it up. We're also gonna frame up and close that skylight as well. We're gonna have to reflash that chimney once we have all this roof stripped out. Our plywood here looks like it's in really, really terrible shape, so. You know, I tore this open yesterday just to see how bad it was, so that's that. And so this is kind of the condition we're in at this point. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bad, it's about time, but I'm happy we finally got to it. I know the customers have had a tough time finding a good roofer to do the job, but when they found my videos, well, they found me. So we're gonna get this done today, right, Sal? Yep, we're gonna get it done. Anything else you wanna add? Nope. Anything about the shingles? They got their life for sure. I know, they definitely got the life out of these. These, these are old and there's three two three layers here huh. so yeah this is going to get stripped today as well hopefully the four of us can make this a pretty quick process the first thing we're going to do before we start is we're going to open up an area of the roof here somewhere and we're going to start stripping from this section here and we're going to work our way to the dumpster throwing all the garbage in let's get to the stripping part that's the next step let's do it let's get her done let's roll the time lapse let's go Let's talk quickly about this roof is made of. Now, this roof is a bunch of layers of tar and paper all put together, and that's why it's called a built-up roof or a BUR roof. And that is applied with a hot kettle on the ground when the roof was originally installed. This is probably the original roof of the building. Um, done a lot in the late 60s, 70s, and 80s. A lot of these roofs are put on, and uh, they last a very long time, so they don't. And there's very hard to fix this roof, and that's why we're replacing it. Turns out I was actually wrong. So this is the second roof that's on here. The original roof is the gravel built up roof and uh, they put a modified bitumen layer on top of it. And then that has a bunch of layers of um, tar on top of that. So this is the old roof right here. And we can reference it from all those three, three to four different drip edges down there. So that's what we're dealing with right now. Let's get it ripped off going pretty good it's not too bad but the plywood on the other hand does look a little bit gone We have finally gotten to the middle of the stripping process, which we thought was gonna be the end of the stripping process, but let me take you guys around and show you guys a little bit what's going on. So, we've stripped everything out, and the plywood's in really bad shape, and we obviously there's a lot of rot here, a lot of rot over there. As we come this way, everything's been saturated with water, so we had a lot of standing water here. Even if you, you just look down at that, you know, you can just see all the water on top of the roof, on top of the plywood. So now we're lifted off a sheet to see how bad the framing is and all the insulation is also saturated too. So that means that we have to do a little bit more of an invasive job than we were planning on doing. We really weren't planning on changing any plywood or two or three sheets or a little bit here and a little bit there, but not to this amount. We're at the point now where we've discovered all the damage because the whole roof's been removed and we're at the point where we've taken off the first four feet of the plywood because everything is gonna get changed because of how bad it is. Now, while we're taking off the plywood, there's only two ways to re-insulate a house. One way is to take the sheetrock down, and insulate up, or we take off the roof and insulate down. And since the plywood's already coming off, it makes sense to re-insulate everything all in one foul soup, because if you don't do it now, it's hard to do it later. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start removing another four feet of plywood which is going to make us have eight feet exposed once the eight feet is exposed it's going to give us a lot of space we can sister up and fix the areas that are very very bad yep 
Heating blues are gonna be a lot better after this job. We only got R19 right now. The minimum by code is R30. So we're gonna put at least R30 in, if not better. Yep. Exactly. So, what are we using today for insulation? We're gonna use double layer of R15 rock swole insulation. Mineral okay. fiber. Mineral fiber. So it's fireproof. Fireproof, low moisture absorption, so there won't be any mold buildup. Nice. Nice, okay. How bad is the plywood? Eh, it's pretty bad. It's not much. On a scale of one to 10, how bad is it? 12. So a couple of these sheets don't actually look that bad. Like this sheet looks okay, and that sheet looks okay. Okay, no, it doesn't. But this sheet looks relatively okay. But when you get to the end of the sheet, a lot of times you'll see like the plies are just coming apart. So, you know, that's a... Uh, it's definitely time to replace this plywood. So we knew the roof was really bad, but we didn't know it was this bad. So this is just the plywood falling apart. That's just every lamination of the plywood. All right, well, there's not much of it. The crazy part is look at all that water. There's like a puddle in there. It's actually sitting on top of the sheetrock right now. What a discovery. Just one thing after another. Wow. Let's get back to stripping because this is a very intense process. We're gonna sister this one up. Okay, why? Because of the, this one's cracked off and we need a solid surface for our plywood to sit on. Okay. So we're gonna add one more next to this one. Which is gonna effectively sistering it up. Effectively sister it up to carry the load. A little bit overkill, but it's okay. I think we're gonna run out of nails at this point. Sorry. We're gonna cut a piece of 83. We're gonna hold it next to it, flush it up. Nail with the other off. ones and we're gonna nail it off. All right. Pretty much if we're even with both beams and we're sitting there, we're gonna be pretty close. Okay. Okay, let's give it a couple nails here. the next day but the first thing we need to do is and to clean out all these bays right here we still got some of the gravel stuck in the base I'm gonna vacuum all that out and then from there I'm gonna cut tiny pieces of insulation to fill up all these bays because they're roughly 12 inches on center and that's kind of uh, well it's not 16 so it's not a common size so each piece has to be cut well two pieces got to be cut for each bay and so yeah that's what we're doing for you guys around so you guys can see what we actually got done yesterday we got all this plywood done we're expecting our delivery to come any minute we got the first drop so uh when the truck shows up they're gonna boom all our roofing insulation up and also we're going to get all the rest of our plywood we need another 20 sheets so leo's just here cleaning up the base leo what do you think of this what do you think of the insulation oh it's disgusting right now we need to put the new insulation there you go this is crazy he said it was crazy. Okay, and that's why we're replacing it. This is not part of my contract, sorry. Okay, well, that makes sense. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty accurate, okay. So, what do you think? Talk to us, what do you think it's about it? It's gonna be a fun day, it's gonna be a long fun day. Okay, long fun day. Let's get to work, let's get this thing going. just showed up they just dropped their plywood for us they're about to drop the insulation so it just saves off so much time and energy just having it delivered straight to the roof today is a very special day because my friend over here it's a second day booming things he's delivered a lot of material but he's never boomed anything for us or very many people he's very new he's very fresh and I'm so excited because he came to my job site even That's if you break it. something I still love you no worries <laughs> tell, tell us what your Instagram name is uh, so I have a food channel on Instagram. It's uh, the Taste Buds 203. Uh, I just try to go around different places, places well known, places people don't know about. And just try to give them some publicity for the good food, you know. He's lived in the air. He can still make a plug for himself. That's why I fucking love this guy. That's why I call him multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, guys. All right, let's get back up on the roof. Let's let's go grab that order from the top. And let's get her done, baby. Part of our job is to remove these skylights. So that's why we just popped the skylight out and it's sitting over there. 
and we don't even bother removing the roofing because the side is going to get deleted. So the first thing we did is we took out the skylight and now we're getting all the trims off. And then this one by material that's, uh, that's nailed up here is going to get removed as well. the point where the last couple sheets are going in yeah. this is what kind of what it looks like we're just finishing the insulation here and that's where the old skylight was structural deck is almost done got a little bit more to go it's a long day it's probably six o'clock already we're gonna be here till it's dark and we got to get it temporarily waterproof so that'll be interesting when they first built this building this was the original must have been the original roof and this was an add-on the flat roof was an add-on plywood was just floating all the way to the edge, right? And the shingles were, they built on top of the shingles, which is nuts. So kind of a hack job kind of thing to do. So what we're doing to fix it and to make it a better situation is we're adding a couple two by fours. So we're adding some blocks to be able to secure like an L shape two by fours so that we have more solid surface to put our plywood onto and to nail it down. The reason we're having to rush so badly is because it's supposed to rain tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. It was supposed to be 11 and we could get the whole roof on and waterproofed at least temporarily waterproofed but uh what are we gonna do it's gonna rain at eight o'clock in the morning so we have to get this at least temporarily waterproof now the insulation doesn't have to go down first but we do have to at least put the tpo down temporarily so what can we do you know i would tarp it but uh contrary to popular belief tarps are not waterproof so we have to make our own tarps that'll be kind of fun we'll be here for a while though you know we gotta get this done for sure It's 922 and we are finally done. Guys, thank you for helping me out. It was really hard. Does anybody have anything to say? Leo, what do you gotta say? Good night. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> it's cold when the sun goes down. The same thing, I said good night. Oh, okay. It's our bedtime, let's go. <laughs> it's time to go home, guys. We just have the roof temporarily covered. The insulation is not down, but this is just temporarily taped in place so that when the water hits, the whole building doesn't flood all in one go. But, I catch you guys in the next one. Maybe we'll reconvene this video when the daylight actually is back again. All right, guys, good night. It's a new day. It's the third day. This is what the roof looks like right now. We had to do this in the dark because obviously, you know, we had to cover up the roof and if we had used a tarp, well, it would have leaked. So we just taped the edges. I don't know how much water came into the building, but hopefully not that much. This is what it looks like before I blow off all the water. The first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna blow off all the water make sure the membrane's dry roll it up real carefully set it aside and then we can start with the insulation let's talk tools real quick here's what you guys need to know about my tools before you guys ask a lot of questions and dm me privately and ask me this is the st1800 these are the best they drive the best and they're now going to be available on the neuron system from hilti as well having a little bit of a hard time here because this this inverted valley is kind of kicking my ass so on this on the map here what i'm doing is where we have to fill in this angle here so we need to cut a 45 degree angle outwards not inwards because it's an inside valley not an outside valley or an outside hip i should say and so what we're going to do now is cut that but this is the hard part it's the hardest cut of the entire building once we figure this out game over we'll be all right so this is kind of what it looks like Look how nicely Sal has decided to cut this angle here. Very, very nice, nice and tight. Let's talk polyisocyanurate for a minute. What I mean by that is ISO for short. Here's what you need to know. 
for every 12 inches, we get thicker by a quarter of an inch because we're using quarter inch pitch panels. There's three panels to the system. There's an X and there's a Y. An X starts at half inch and goes to inch and a half. Then the Y starts at inch and a half and goes to two and a half. We have a filler panel of two inch. After we've laid down our first two pieces, which is an X and a Y, we're now at this point where they don't make unique pieces for every line that you're doing. You have to double up panels or you have to add a filler panel. And we're gonna add two inches first and start with another X. Then we're gonna add another filler, start with another Y, X and Y, all the way towards the center of the map. Now that I've over explained all the insulation to you guys, let's talk about our fastener. We're using three inch screws and three inch insulation plates. And we're screwing at least five screws per panel. And uh, we're gonna work our way up progressively using longer screws because we're gonna be thicker right here in the center. We are finally done with the tapered insulation. And this is what it looks like. Looks pretty good, I gotta say. Everything looks pretty flat. We have, a, we have a ridge right here going all the way down to here. We have a ridge cutting across. We have a ridge cutting across to here. And then a ridge again. So, obviously we're shedding the water that direction, that direction. I think it looks pretty good. Everything looks pretty tight. You know. This insulation did cost me a couple thousand dollars more to do it this way, you know, eighth versus uh, quarter inch pitch. We could have done eighth, it would have been a lot cheaper, but you know what? We're just trying to do the best we can. So spend a little more money, get a much better product. So that's all we're trying to do here. So what we're gonna do next is start putting down the actual roof. The finished product is gonna go down right now. first piece is down and it looks pretty good you can see our screws and our plates through the membrane which means we've done a really tight job I think it looks really nice once the membrane's cleaned a little bit it's gonna look even better but this is like one of those roofs that's gonna last forever because of how how little and how few seams there are it's just a beautiful system and the fact that it reflects so much light makes it even more beautiful Keeps the whole building nice and cool. What we have right now is cavity insulation between our rafters, which is like an R30. And then right here in the center, in the thickest area, we have another R30. So we have technically R60. So this building should stay a lot cooler and a lot warmer. So let's get to the next sheet. Now that everything's been completely installed, the next thing we can do is weld our lap. And as you can see, the glue is missing from that seam. So all we need to now do is run the robot in the seam, weld it everything up, and then the whole roof will be watertight. Well, except for all the little penetrations like this chimney in the center. We've still gotta do some work around him, but other than that, we'll be all right. So, the welder's pretty much ready to go. We're at 950 degrees, welding at 3.6 feet a minute. So let's get her done. That's the end of today. Not everything is done, but it's done well enough so that we know we're not gonna have any water infiltration in the building. So this is kind of what it looks like. We've just taped off a couple areas that need to be patched. 
the chimney flashing still needs to be done we got a patch of strip in there but overall i think it looks pretty good super flat super nice super clean this is what we also gotta do the flashing over here as well and then we have drip edges to put on the perimeter of the roof but all in all it looks pretty good it's time for me to go because i gotta get to the city so let's get out of here before it gets too late